Hey there, it's John from Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate commission or tax rates in Excel. And we're going to look at a comparison between the if function and VLOOKUP and the new XLOOKUP functions to see which one is best. So in this example here, we have this commission table that has a bunch of different tiers here for payout rates. And then we have this sales amount. And essentially what we want to do is look up this amount in this table and return the payout rate. So if the sales amount is between zero and 50,000, we'll return the payout rate of 5%. If the sales amount is between 50,001 and 100,000, we'll return 7% and so on. And as you can tell there, as I'm explaining this, I'm using a bunch of if statements. And so in our, uh, I have some formulas down here and I'll explain how each of these works using different functions. And the first we'll look at is the if function. So here's the formula here that will calculate this result. And as we can see, it's a pretty big, uh, long, ugly formula. This is what's typically referred to as a nested if formula because we have uh, a bunch of if statements nested within one formula. So I'll just jump through the logic here. I won't rewrite it, but I will uh, jump through the formula. In the first if statement, we have a logical test. And this is saying if C9, the value of C9, our sales amount, is less than or equal to uh, 50,000, C4, then return D4, return this number here. If that's false, then we have another if statement that's saying if C9 is less than or equal to C5, 100,000, then return D5. If that's false, then I'll look at C9 compared to, or if it's less than or equal to C6, and return D6, 10%. Uh, and if all of those are false, then return D7, which is 15%. So that's how this if statement works. And as you can tell, it's a long, ugly formula and uh, pretty difficult to write. So let's take a look at how we could do this with either VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP. So we'll jump down here to VLOOKUP first. And here's our VLOOKUP formula. So you can see it's much shorter, so already an advantage there with VLOOKUP, a much shorter formula. So let's go ahead and rewrite this and I'll explain the logic. Because if you haven't used VLOOKUP like this before, it's a little bit different than your normal VLOOKUP. So we're going to type equals uh, VLOOKUP, we'll tab into that. Our lookup value is going to be the sales amount right here. So we'll type a comma, select C9, type a comma. And then our table array is going to start with the tier minimum column. So when you're setting up your commission or tax rate table, you'll want to have a column that just contains the minimum value for each tier or each row in the rate table. And that's what we have here in column B. And we'll select all the way over to our payout rate, which is the value we want to return. So we have this reference here from B4 to D7. I'm going to hit F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference. That's just in case we copy our formula down. We always want to reference this range right here. I'm going to type a comma. And for the column index number, we want a three here because we want to return the third column in, the in this range here, uh, in our payout, which is our payout rate column. And then for the last argument, we're going to use true. Now, typically when you do VLOOKUP, you use false here for an exact match. But in this case, we're going to use true for an approximate match. So we can type true here and close the parentheses. And I'll explain how this works. So what VLOOKUP is doing when the last argument is true is it's taking this value here, our lookup value, and it's looking down this column right here, and it's just looking to find an exact match of that value. If it does not find an exact match, it returns the row above that wh whatever number is greater than our lookup value. So as it goes down here, we're looking for 65,000. Obviously, this number is less. 50,001 is also less, and it is not an exact match. So when it gets to 100,001, this number is greater than 65,000, and it's not an exact match, so VLOOKUP then returns the row above. It considers this to be the matching row, 50,001, and it will return 7%. 
So that's a little bit, uh, can, it might be a little bit confusing for you when you first learn this. And I encourage you to go back and re-watch that explanation if it is, and then practice this, uh, because it will start to make sense over time. Essentially, this uh, argument here is called range lookup. It's named range lookup when this is true, and that's because we're looking between ranges of numbers here, between zero and 50,001, 50,001 and 100,001. It allows us to look between ranges of numbers and then return a value. I should point out, and it's important to note, that, that whatever values are in column C do not matter. X look, I'm sorry, VLOOKUP is not looking at this column at all. I just have that there to make the explanation easier. You could uh, delete this column and the formula would still work. So it's not looking here, it just that's just an easier way to kind of look at the rate table. So that's VLOOKUP. Uh, much easier, much shorter and easier to write. And I'll also explain maintenance of the formulas at the end of this video as well and see some advantages there with VLOOKUP. Now, XLOOKUP is a new lookup function, uh, the uh, successor to VLOOKUP, and we can also do this calculation with XLOOKUP. So for XLOOKUP, it's, it's similar to VLOOKUP in the way it works. Uh, we have the lookup value here, which is again 65,000. With XLOOKUP, we specify the lookup array and the return array separately. So with VLOOKUP, we just have one table array. With XLOOKUP, we have those separate. So we have the lookup array, which is this column right here. And then we have the return array argument, which is column D, our payout rate, the rates we're going to return, or the values we're going to return. Uh, then we have the value if not found argument. This allows us to kind of put the if error function within XLOOKUP itself. So we just return a zero there. I could put text here or leave this blank. It's an optional argument. And then we have match mode. So for match mode, I'm gonna hold the Alt key and press down arrow here so we can see, uh, oops, let me get that for you. So we can see these, there we go, here's our options. So by default, XLOOKUP does an exact match, which is what we have when we use false in VLOOKUP. Uh, but we can also choose an exact match or next smaller item, which is what I have here. I have a negative one referenced, and that's what we're doing here. So what XLOOKUP is doing in this scenario is it's looking for this value, an exact match of this value, or the next smaller item. So it's really doing very similar to what VLOOKUP does, is again, goes down this column. If it finds an exact match, it's going to return that row. If it doesn't find an exact match, it's going to return the next smaller item. So in that case, this again would be this row five here uh, for 50,001. Now the difference here between VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP is these values in this rate table column or this tier minimum column do not need to be sorted with XLOOKUP. With VLOOKUP they do because VLOOKUP is really going down the column vertically and uh, returning that row above if it doesn't find the exact match. XLOOKUP's not, it's actually kind of doing another lookup uh, for that next smaller item. So here we'd find 100,001 and say, no, that's too big. Let's do a lookup for the next smaller item or return the next smaller item, which would be 50,001. But 50,001 does not need to necessarily be right above 100,000. Now, when you're doing commission tables and, and tax tables like this, your numbers are probably always going to be sorted anyways, so it kind of doesn't matter. But it's just good to know that X, that's one ad potential advantage of XLOOKUP is your rate table does not need to be sorted. Again, I would recommend sorting it for this type of scenario because anyone that looks at this is going to look at this in kind of this logical order and want to see those in order. So that's how XLOOKUP works. Uh, the search mode is an optional argument. We don't need to specify it here. So we can hit enter and we'll see if we get the same result. So now let's talk about formula maintenance uh, because as we've seen, obviously uh, VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP have an advantage here. They're just easier to write. But one other advantage is they're easier to maintain. And what I mean by that is if we get a, let's say we get a new tier in our rate table here. I'm just going to right click here and insert a row above. And then we'll call this, let's call this 12501 uh, to 150. Uh, yeah, that'll be 150 like that. And this will be 125,000. And then that will be, yeah, that all looks good, up 12% payout rate. So we've inserted a new tier. And then let's change our sales amount to uh, be somewhere in that tier. We'll call it 130,000. And as you can see here, our VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP are now returning the correct result because 130,000 is within this tier right here. However, our nested if is not. 
If we hit F2 on the keyboard here to look at this formula, we can see that we don't have anything referenced here for this new row. Uh, with VLOOKUP and XLOOKUP, they're automatically going to extend the table array or the ranges here, these arrays, these ranges. When we insert a new row within the array or the range, they automatically extend for us or insert for us to expand our range. But the nested if is not. So we're going to need to go type a whole new if function to handle this logic here for this row, which will make our formula even longer and uglier. So as you get more tiers, if your tax or commission rate tables have a lot of tiers in them, a lot of rows, uh, this formula becomes much longer and much more difficult to maintain. Now, if you still want to use a nested if, I know some people just still like this. It's easier for their users of their file to kind of read through this. That's fine. I'm not saying don't use these at all. I just want to give you a heads up on the pros and cons here. And one thing you want to do with your nested if is make sure that you make all of your references here absolute references. So all of these references here, you can see I've hit F4 to put the dollar sign in front of the column letter and row number to make those absolute references because as you copy this formula down, let's say you have a list of employees with uh, uh, sales amounts and you copy the formula down, you wanna make sure that these references stay the same. So that's one additional step you need to take when writing this formula is making sure all of those are absolute. And again, it just becomes more challenging if you do have errors in your formula to go diagnose those and try and figure out what's going on in every single one of these if functions, really testing out each of those. So I highly recommend using VLOOKUP or the new XLOOKUP function. I have a separate video on XLOOKUP uh, and some of the advantages of it over VLOOKUP. Uh, one big thing there is just compatibility. Make sure you're on a version of Excel that has XLOOKUP and all of your users are on a version of Excel that has XLOOKUP. And otherwise, the good old VLOOKUP works great for this scenario as well. So I hope that's helped you. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions about these formulas, please leave a comment right below this video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.